Okay, replay review. Let's take a look at this form really quickly. Uh, from Vigil, Reinhardt Winston Wrecking Ball. What are your long-term and short-term goals in Overwatch? Play competitively to get higher rank. Okay. What do you feel is holding back from improving mainly mentality? I get meltdown when they four counter or DPS heal diff. Also, since Overwatch went online, my tank positioning has always been weird. Okay, makes sense. So I, I think the, the big thing to remember is that the matchmaking is always trying to give you a, a relatively close game. There will be discrepancies in average MMR slash SR from team to team, but the, in the interest of getting you a faster queue, sometimes you'll have a slightly higher, better ranked team. Sometimes you'll have a slightly lower ranked team. For example, you might queue into a plat three team while the enemy team has plat four and vice versa, but over the course of 10, 12, 50, 100,000 games, the over average SR is gonna be the same. And it's always important to always focus on what you need to be doing better, what your priorities are in terms of improvement, because you're gonna be the consistent factor in all your games. Now, that might mean that you're only a 10% factor considering that there's 10 players. However, if you are consistently better than your counterpart or outplaying yourself every single time, you're over the course of the long run going to win 52, 53, 55% of your games, which is over the course of time going to allow you to get to a higher rank. Now, ultimately, that is going to plateau. Even pro players pl plateau. They keep winning and winning and winning and winning and winning until the game puts them in really, really hard lobbies, expects them to deadlift, and then they kind of plateau. So for you, it's just about finding what you need to get better in the meantime. Um, DPS heal diff, you cannot ever put emphasis on that, whether it's something that you're seeing in-game in terms of, I don't feel like my teammates are making the, making the correct plays, whether it's something you're looking at the stats. Obviously, statistics are terrible parameters when it comes to checking out how somebody's actually performing at the game. It's really difficult, actually, to tell whether somebody's doing well or, or not because you can get a lot of damage from shooting the enemy tank whereas putting pressure on enemy supports or dps is more valuable and the same thing goes for healing you can heal your tank a lot but that's not going to be the biggest thing there um you can get a big big damage stats as a tank if you're hogging a lot of heal resource um whereas you're denying your dps the opportunity to get that same pocket because you're being super super greedy and so on so don't focus on necessarily what, what your stats are focus on trying to cut down on avoidable deaths and then as a whole playing better. Even high deaths is not necessarily a bad thing. But hours of sleep, 10 hours, looks good. What do you hope to get out of the session? I hope to figure out what was wrong with my tanking. My tank is not this bad in Overwatch 1. Okay, uh, I still like playing tank, but I actually play to get a nervous breakdown. <laughs> it's just a game, mate. So the big thing is just always to remember that it's a very competitive game. It's one of the most stressful games out there. Uh, but deep breaths, focus on what you need to be doing each and every game. And remember that even though it is a competitive game, competitive, is not a life or death game. Competitive means that, let's put it this way. If I'm playing versus a four-year-old at tic-tac-toe, <laughs> it's not competitive. If I'm playing versus somebody my age or even a teenager and whatever at tic-tac-toe, it's competitive. Now, does that mean that I'm going to lose points and cry and weep and it's really important who wins that game or loses that game? No, that's not what competitive means. Let's actually look up the definition of competitive. Um, competitive of in and determined by competition you're trying to win so of course it's competitive inclined desire or suited to compete which you want to compete you want to try to win you're going to get in there um let's see here what's another one um and i think also it's an adjective as well where it would be a because people are trying for winning the game is going to make it, like for example, it was a competitive game. What does that really mean? Does that mean that it was, oh, a, a life or death game? No, it just means that the matchmaking teams were both equally competing at a high level uh, and it was a challenging game is another way of putting it. So competitive is a format where the matchmaker tries to put it in as close as it can possibly get possibly uh, within the, the limits of human error, uh, put you in a game where it's going to be competitive, where relatively challenging. Now, most games aren't going to be super challenging. Most games aren't gonna be super close, but it's going to try and do as best as you possibly can. If you ever played arcade or quick play, it's a lot messier than that. Games can often be a lot more stompy. I remember in arcade deathmatch when I was grinding arcade deathmatch, I think I had a win rate in arcade deathmatch of like 30, 40%. And I maintained that for a long time. Um, means I was winning first place on Zenyatta on like a vast majority of my arcade deathmatches. So, so it's like, there's just not that many playing arcade. So it's not gonna be that competitive, but competitive, it's going to be somewhat competitive, at least hit or miss. So for you, don't treat competitive as it's a big deal. It's just quick play. It's just for fun. The only difference is that things are a little bit more intense because people are trying a little bit harder to win. They're playing the roles that they want to do um, and that there is stakes. 
but those stakes are ultimately meaningless because again the difference between competitive and real life competitive is that if you lose a game in real life let's say a sports game or something like that you can't requeue a sports game you're done for the week for the month right but in competitive you can always requeue so don't get stressed out focus on what you need to get better be consistent with your training time which by the way if your goal is to get to a higher rank and you're currently at the, uh, plat the way to get to a higher rank i would recommend would be to aim for something like an hour and a half a day uh consistently grinding at the tank heroes that you want to improve it says here reinhardt winston wrecking ball in the form you also have a sigma vod review as well or at least you start off in sigma so you want to be consistently playing a few heroes at a time and putting time to work at specific goals of those heroes be consistent and for about an hour and a half to two hours per day if you can get that um if you can't that's okay even an hour a day is totally fine competitive games because those are a little bit more competitive it's just better practice it doesn't mean that it's more important in terms of winning or losing it's just better practice uh, and try to try to not take things too seriously focus on what you need to do what you need to do yourself you get meltdown when they got four counters or whatever doesn't matter and if they have counters it might be more of an understanding of what you need to be doing to play around them unless that they are on counters themselves um so we'll take a quick look at your sigma maybe we'll take a look at your reinhardt as well maybe some winston we'll, we'll try and make it simple because obviously i assume that you would like a little bit of feedback on all of these heroes so let me adjust the volume here turn it down just a, a wee little bit uh okay let's uh let's take a look here uh all so sigma all about putting range pressure on the enemy team as best as you can at a good time one thing you can kind of look at right now is that a lot of your HP and shield is being wasted because you're not playing near cover. Now, you might be thinking, well, I wanted to kind of rotate to this angle here. Then you would like to have full shield to do that. So if you know you want to rotate, play cover here. Don't even shield. Just peek and do damage. You see, the, iron, the, the thing with Sigma Shield is most of the time, not all the time, the shield is used for you to be able to do damage or to block cooldowns when cover isn't available or when cover isn't good enough. It's not for your team. So right now the shield is just breaking, but there's no particular value out of it. You see most of your team is still coming out of spawn or hiding behind payload. You should just be sitting on this cover here, spamming and saving your shield so that if you do want to do this rotate here, you could do it without having to take too much damage because ultimately you just end up dropping and what was the point, right? So range pressure. I wouldn't even use my shield here, right? Because you're not blocking it any damage for anybody. Use it, focus. For I think the, the level one understanding for Sigma Shield is using it for yourself and for yourself only. And when you get better at that, <coughs> then we can start to see the exceptions to the rules when you can kind of shield an angle for your team while you're spamming another angle. But for right now, focus on trying to only manage your shield for when you need it, when there's an important cooldown, a lot of burst damage, or that you're low, something like that. Like even right there, probably don't need to shield the Ash. You're 475 HP, one shot here, and she's gonna have to leave. So why even bother shielding? Let it recharge. Because remember, every time you put it out, you reset that timer for it to actually recharge and get back again. So you should be at like 400 shield right now, maybe more, and, and you're not. I like the attention on the Ana. Probably wouldn't preemptively rock her Ryan. Definitely try to react. Definitely drop your shield. <laughs> Again, that's another 150, 200 shield that should have recharged. Again, what are you shielding here? What are you shielding? You're at full HP. You have cart for cover. Your teams are all in off angles and flanks. They're, nobody's getting value out of this. Save it. You should be at full shield now so that if you want to, you could heavily spam this Hanzo. Maybe go forward full shield on the Ash so you can spam the Moira or spam the Reinhardt. Maybe you could full shield behind the Reinhardt to prevent healing from him, but you don't have any shield. You see, still haven't re fully recharged. Nice rock. I, by the way, really like that you're not only focusing Reinhardt here, but you're cutting off his healing resource. It's really nice. Again, there as well. <clears throat> that was good. Okay, nice rock again. Now let's start to walk forward. Now, one little tip that you might have if you ever get stuck in a really nasty choke, you can wrap around this way and take a better off angle on the squishies or even like this. Um, and if they're playing like super close here, you can take this angle as well. But I think this is a good way to bypass Ryan because you're doing a good job trying to shoot past the Ryan, but the Reinhardt's also doing a good job just stuffing you in the choke. So I don't think you're playing this one poorly, but I think there are other options, and obviously like, then you get flanked by a Hanzo on that very same high ground. But I think there's some other options that you could have taken here. Because there's nothing more frustrating than what you've done, which is feel like you've done so much pressure on Ryan, but you've not been able to break through the choke. Don't focus, Ryan. Good. Good. Drop that shield, drop that shield, drop that shield, drop that shield, drop it. 
I wouldn't even use it. You need to get your shield back. You because now the damage from the ash is scary because the fight's actually starting, right? Or there's something of a fight starting. But just now is your shield fully recharged. You should have already had a shield in that ash a long time ago. And again, I would not be shooting Reinhardt here. I know it sounds weird to say that, but it, it, but he should have blocked that rock, and I it's more important for you to shield and shoot or shoot and shield a different angle here. These guys need to be shot. You're very good at damaging squishies. Your tank damage is okay, but it's very blockable by Reinhardt if he's playing well. What could have happened there is the Reinhardt hard shields survives. Meanwhile, his backline pops off because you should you weren't shooting them. You did shield them. You would have liked both. Let's take that high ground top right as soon as you get a little bit of space on that Reinhardt. No, 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 no. As soon as you see that high noon, you could shield this guy off. You need to get up here. You need to deal with this chick right here. Look at that. Look at this old woman. What is she doing? How is she allowed to? She's going to pop off from here, right? You can't let her do that. This trade with the Reinhardt is not good. You are not very good at beating a Reinhardt in close range. I know that feels obvious, but it's very important that we remember that. And then obviously because we missed that opportunity, now Reinhardt's stuffing us in a choke, and now we have to shoot Reinhardt. There's nothing but shooting Reinhardt. But obviously that doesn't feel super good. Even as that Reinhardt overextends. There we go. Might need to shift this. Oh, unfortunate. Okay, let's let's keep going. So we'll watch one more ultimate, and then we'll move on to the next one. So a lot of what you've been doing is I want to see light, slightly better shield usage. Only use shield when you have burst damage cooldowns or something that you're rotating out in the open. Try to use cover more and allow your shield to recharge for those crucial moments. And whenever you can, look for things other than Reinhardt. I mean, right there. I mean, look at that. Look at that. That was a good shot. You're not always going to hit those, but it's reward versus risk. Very, 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 very high risk for the rock. It might have just not hit, but very, very high reward. The thing with the Reinhardt is it's... No risk, right? But it's almost a zero reward. What I want you to try and do is look for rocks that are maybe a little bit tricky, but actually have some re reasonable reward. You see, if you're thinking about tanks to rock, maybe Diva, maybe a Sigma in the trade, maybe a Doomfist, at least those tanks you can guarantee the rock actually to matter. Reinhardt is one of the worst. Maybe even like a Roadhog, right? Yes, 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 yes. Stop shooting right. Stop shooting right. Oh, no, 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 no. He's not going to die. Right? You see? What, what have you accomplished here? You could have Flux Rhine, maybe, or just even use Flux to take high ground. So that, But when you take high ground to Sigma, why are you taking high ground? You're taking high ground so you can shoot Squishies. So right now, probably Flux to high, either Flux Hanzo or Ash. Shield, take this angle, shoot your Squishies, and ignore Reinhardt. What, the tank that controls the enemy backline or DPS more is usually the tank that wins. And I know when you think about tanks like Winston or Ball, that's obvious, but it's actually just as important with something like Sigma. You can't always avoid Reinhardt, but whenever you can, you need to try. And sometimes, to be fair, you were doing so, but it's been extremely inconsistent. Okay, let's take a look at some Winston here. So, Winston, really nothing has changed. It's the same thing. Now, Winston, it might be a little bit easier sometimes because while you don't have the, the range spam that Sigma does, you do have the mobility, the speed, so that you can get to those squishies directly. So let's see how we do here. We need to get away from that Reinhardt. Yes. Is our team out of spawn? Yeah, see, these are the fundamentals of tanking. Every time I look at a tank, you know? This just isn't going to work. This just isn't, isn't going to work. The idea of what you're doing, perfect. Great targets, great timing, going to get landing damage, going to get a fat bubble. That Reinhardt's going to get isolated. These guys might even die, but your team's in small. <laughs> so that would be something to, to be aware of. It's very important because you might die for this. But why are you dying for this, right? You gave your team zero opportunity to heal you, to help you, to focus that. Imagine if you jumped backline and your Bastion had popped turret form and burned Rind. Rind probably would have died. And you would have lived because you would have gotten on and Kiriko help. Unfortunate. And then now you've started the stagger. Because you went in by yourself. And you might be frustrated that your team is staggering. But it was actually you that started the stagger. So this is why I said it's really important to focus on what you need to be doing to get better. Because while there are things that you were doing very well, there's also things you're not doing so well at. And the game becomes less frustrating when you feel like there are big parts of gameplay that you can control. Your play, you can control. Nice. Stuff's happening, right? Absolutely a good time to go for squishies. You managed to juke the Reinhardt, avoid the Reinhardt. Obviously right now you need to be really careful about Bob, but you get a nice kill. Let's juke the Reinhardt again. There we go. 
I don't think he even saw the on him, but it doesn't matter. She's gonna die and the Hanzo. Nice job. Now here's the funny thing. Watch the Reinhardt, because you're like, okay, I killed I killed the backline, right? Well, you actually also killed the Reinhardt. Watch this. Now he messed up his pen. But look at this Reinhardt. No help. No DPS help. Where are his DPS? Where are his supports? You did that. Nice shot. And obviously the nano is just the cherry on top, right? Where it? Nice. Good patience on diving the ash. Obviously, you have to worry about cart. Now, it's obviously very tricky with OT, but if... Ah, yeah, it's hard. Because optimally, you want to leave cart, right? You need to be... You need to be go kill the squishy. But obviously, there's always the panic that we might see nine. I would, as soon as I can, leave cart. Yeah. But imagine if you had done that with bubble, right? Probably would have gone a little bit better. Okay. Either way. Nice work. I actually like Winston on second and third point. There's a lot of nice high grounds. The high grounds are good because they allow you to get to squishies uh, without taking damage. First point is too open. The high grounds are too wide open space, but yeah. But you can see, like, look at all these squishies, man. It's like a, it's like a petting zoo, you know? One of my worst analogies ever. Okay, don't look at Ryan. Don't look at Ryan. Look at what's flanking you right now. Only, 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 only look at Ryan when he's literally feeding and there's literally nobody else to shoot, right? There's no way this actor should be able to walk to you. Perfect timing to engage, though. You see this? Look, look at this team play going on right here. You see Moira? I wouldn't pop bubble on Moira, because uh, more, more often than not, she's going to fade. So you trade your jump for fade, which is not a bad trade, right? Uh, it's a, it's about the same cooldown, but what that means is that look at your cooldowns now You can jump before she gets her fade back and then you can bubble that jump and then secure the kill So unless you know that she doesn't have fade, I would not jump uh, Bubble that first jump because she's gonna fade away. You're not you don't have no cooldowns. That you have to block or anything nice probably also would not have bubbled here as well now you look at their composition and a lot of the preemptive or proactive or early bubbles are as a result of expecting two things, burst damage or crowd control. Sleep dart, uh, 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 you know, a whip shot from Brig, a boot from Lucio, any of those things, or, you know, like a Hanzo shot, right? So you use the bubble because you don't want to take that damage immediately. But if you think about their composition and just look at the supports that you're jumping, you jump the Moira, which we talked about the fade thing, and then we're jumping a Genji and the Kiriko. Look at your HP. Worst case scenario, that Kiriko headshots you and you get down to 400 HP, and then you bubble afterwards. Like, oh, okay, she's shooting me now. I guess I don't. But the problem is, again, here, where you actually take zero damage, and now is a perfect time to jump in again, but you don't have your bubble. So you are going to jump in again, and you're going to pop primal, so you're going to be fine. But I, I would like you for you to jump here, bubble, and then primal if you even need to. Because especially versus these targets, it might be better to not even primal. It might be better to just zap them. But yeah, long story short, try to do a better read, whether it's a sniper or an Ana or a Cassidy or something like that, you're gonna need a bubble. You're gonna need to bubble most jumps, but I would try and do a better job of reading the enemy comp and just looking at your HP. Like right now, bubble would have been really good to prevent, and you should have bubbled here as well, um, to prevent that you even taking any damage at all. All right, so it looks like we're gonna cap. Nice work. We've done a really good job setting up dives in the enemy backline. Not so good of a job being aware of where our team was positioned, and then also a little bit early with the way that we were using bubble. Okay, so I'm gonna skip to the Winston here so we can stay on the same point, same topics. We need to get healed. We need to wait for our team to take positions and push card a little bit. And then once we've done that, so this is a little early, uh, you need to be very careful. Um, I appreciate you jumping. I think the logic here is you're gonna jump Widow so that your team can start to push cart. And I think that's fine, but you need to keep in mind you need to be very careful because you are going in really, really deep. So as soon as that win win Widow's out, you definitely need to bubble this pretty soon. Yep. Yeah, you might die. Yeah, just a little, a little slow. A little slow. I appreciate your intention, though, so I think that's fine. Don't jump, Winston. Don't, or Reiner. Don't jump, Reiner. Get that sniper. Yes. Huge. Huge. Lots of kill threat. Even if you don't get the kill here, lots of value. You get the kill, too. Perfect. Best of both worlds. Nice. Nice. Now, you're like, that Reinhardt, you watch, do you see the Reinhardt? Where's that Reinhardt's help? Well, the Reinhardt's help is focusing on trying to keep the DPS alive who you kill anyway. Whoopsies. Nice shot. And Winston, so much of Winston is just jumping squishies at a good time without taking damage when your team can help you. Over and over and over and over again. Now, your team can't help you here 
So this is a little bit risky, but if you see that she's already loading, you think you get the kill, I'm okay with it. Like normally that's not a good trade. You might've gotten shot there and your team couldn't have helped you. Avoid the Reinhardt, go back up, get that Kiri or the Ash. Yes, because now your team can shoot the Reinhardt, right? So it's a great trade for you because you know this Reinhardt's gonna die, surely. <laughs> I don't know, maybe it won't. Yep, see, there it is. You kill that Reinhardt indirectly. It's all about the direct pressure that sets up indirect kills. You directly pressure the squishies, so they indirectly kill the enemy tank. There is not a more powerful dive tank in the game with, other than a Winston with bubble. Wrecking Ball's more consistent. Um, D.Va doesn't rely as many cooldowns. D.Va's better versus tanks as well. But when it comes to a Winston with, with, uh, with bubble, he's just, he's, when you have bubble, you are the, about the strongest tank in the game. Now, where are we? We're not quite, I don't think you need to go just yet. I would wait till we turn the corner just a little bit, then I would go. I'm a little scared that they might focus you out here. Nope, works out. Oh, that's unfortunate. Bubble's fine, because you were taking damage. Great job focusing Cassidy. This might be a good push for you guys. I think, especially now that they use that Coalescence. And now you see they're playing Mystery Heroes as well. They keep swapping DPS, so they haven't even farmed a DPS yet. Let's keep going. Don't jump the Reinhardt. Don't jump the Reinhardt. Jump the Moira. This one is definitely a little, a little trickier because they did go Reaper. But uh, if you had been found a way to avoid that front line and jump the Ash, that would have been better. I understand that it's almost impossible in OT, so it's not optimal whatsoever. But like, let's say it wasn't OT, you would have liked to have avoided the Reaper, jump the Ash, kill the Ash, make that Reaper turn around and chase you. He's a worthless hero if he's chasing you around the map. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's mostly unfortunate just because you had OT. Okay, let's uh, let's take a look at some Reinhardt here. So for the big thing for you with Winston, keep doing with what you're doing, but just make sure that you're trying to avoid those frontline heroes like that Reinhardt, that Reaper, the Bastion, things like that. They're gonna go with those counters. You'll know exactly how that goes. Um, avoid them. Go for the heroes that you can, the squishies that you can focus. Um, and make your counters try to chase you around the map. Something like Bastion is something you can also do a better job of if you like bait their turret form and then wait, wait it out and just survive, um, especially if you didn't use bubble, but yeah. Winston is definitely a, a hero that is is counterable, but it is very play aroundable <laughs> if you're smart. Uh, okay, let's uh, let's keep, let's take a look at some Reinhardt here. So Reinhardt is a little bit more nuanced because Reinhardt, unlike the other tanks, uh, a lot of other tanks, is really quite good at beating up enemy tanks. So for example, if I look at the enemy composition, there's not a hero on that that lobby besides like a tracer. Okay, never mind. Now they're not even on tracer anymore. Uh, that I don't want to hit with my hammer. I mean, I can kill anything on that comp with my hammer, even the enemy Ryan. So I optimally would like to hit Hanzo or Widow or, or Moira or whatever, whatever, with my hammer. Moira and Kiriko are harder to kill. Hanzo and Widow, pretty easy to kill. The problem though, obviously, is that usually where Hanzo and Widow play is not killable. It's too far away. Sometimes they might get too greedy and you can pin on the flank and go kill them, right? Um, but you might have to focus on winning the Reinhardt trade simply because he's the only thing that you can hit. But as soon as he's the not the only thing that you can hit, you need to shift your focus onto what's accessible. Same thing applies with your shield, by the way. Your shield is usually just for you. Ooh, Echo is tough. Okay, so Echo can't really deal with her. You could write that hero off because you can't hit her with your hammer. Probably not the best spot to take a fight, to be honest with you. I'd rather you let them come a little bit through the choke so that you can use this high ground and you can actually hit the Moira or the Kiriko or whatever instead of only hitting the Reinhardt and where only a few members of your team can actually help. See, even your soldier, this doesn't have a really great angle. Look at your soldier's POV. It's kind of hard. You see, it's kind of hard for your soldier to see anything besides the enemy Reinhardt. Now we might have an option to do something, but yeah. So your soldiers pushed up, so now we do want to be fighting aggressively here. But even now, it's like even that fire strike right there, that was good. I respect that. I respect that. It's good intentions. He hits the Widowmaker, gets her low. That's unfortunate. See, this is the thing, this is why I wanted this high ground position from you. You see, the problem with what you're doing now is it's too late. That's the weakness of Reinhardt. When it comes to verticality, Reinhardt has, where he invests his time, 
and that's all he has. See, there's no going back. Once you drop as Ryan in the middle of a fight, there's no going back, uh, unless you're playing with a Life Weaver, I guess, right? Um, so once you've dropped here, you have now screened the enemy Kiriko and Widowmaker. Whenever you guys want, you guys can take the high ground. I can't stop you, right? Whereas if you stay here, you can either stop them from holding high ground, and yes, you let the Reinhardt push the cart. So what, right? What, what is it? What, they don't get a lot out of that, right? Their DPS are still stuck in the choke. And you have the opportunity to drop on their squishies or stop them from taking this position here. A lot of retroactively, you could look back at Reinhardt and be like, oh, I can't reach them up there. Well, then could you have been there in the first place? That being said, if you're gonna beat the Reinhardt in a Reinhardt duel, beat the Reinhardt in a Reinhardt duel. <laughs> if you're gonna focus on the Reinhardt trade, you better darn win, darn win that trade. English, yeah, you're dead. Good try. The high ground is just a good way for you to reach that widow, for you to reach that more, for you to reach that Kiriko, right? So you're standing here, you might be thinking I'm protecting my team and that's fine, but I, I, I think I want you over here. Why? Because you would protect your team if you stopped the Kiriko from taking this angle. And protect your team if you made that widow stay over here and never ever come over here, because she does, she does, right? And the thing is, is if you go over here, team can still heal you. Your team can still damage you, or damage on your body is what I'm saying. Problem here is you're holding a corner, but why? The best thing you could do is stop the cart. Sometimes you do you do have to worry about cart. We saw that earlier in the VOD, but right now, you don't need to worry about cart. Stop cart later. Get rid of this, get rid of these guys. Go clear out that space. Hit them with your hammer. They're over there, look at this. And this is what's gonna make you feel helpless, this Reinhardt, doing things like this, where you are really just a spectator to what's going on around you and the high grounds on the flanks because you're just sitting on a corner. If it's a choke that the enemy team has to push through, Sit on the corner. Even here was at least reasonable. I would have preferred you here, but reasonable. Here, there is no reason for the enemy team to fight fairly and not to take this window and, and not to take this flank and not to take this high ground here. And what have you done to help your team control that really important space, right? Space is just an important area of the map that's really helpful for the enemy team to control. And if you look, I mean, this is still gonna be really hard to win. I think you guys are down so many. Um, if you look at this, you're like, well, I'm winning the Reinhardt trades. Why am I not winning? Well, it's because so much of the battlefield, you are not controlling. You're not helping. <laughs> come on, come on. Ah. Unlucky. I like this. Get rid of this Kiriko. Get rid of her. Get rid of this Echo even. Look at this. Look at this. This is good. Now you couldn't control the Widowmaker, but that's not your fault. Now your team might be like, ah, oh, shield, 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 shield. You see, the problem with that mindset is if you go here and shield, that Widowmaker takes the high ground and now you can't shield her at all. At least here, your team could theoretically hide behind a corner. Hiding from a Widowmaker and high ground is 10 times harder. So I don't want you to look at this and be like, ah, oh, I should have, you are making the right play. That is the one problem with ranked, but it's important to have a good attitude is there are going to be fights where you played it correctly and you got punished. There are going to be fights, those we've already seen, where you don't play correctly and you don't get punished. That's just the nature of rank. You need to play the odds, though, and make decisions that are more often than not the correct play. And then over the course of time, your win result, your win rate will reflect that. Okay, let's, uh, do we have any more Ryan here? Or is it just instant from here on out? Um, doesn't look like we have any more Ryan. Maybe we can look at a little bit more Winston. We've got time. And then at the end, we'll, we'll wrap things up in a nice, tidy little bow. And we'll give you some specific goals to work on. So same thing. Avoid that Reaper. Find that Kiriko. Find that Moira. I know those are not very attractive heroes to jump. But the good news is that when they're running heroes like Moira Kiriko that you feel like you can't necessarily kill immediately. They take a little bit of time. Um, you know, use that bubble trick, like I said. Don't just bubble immediately. But it also means that they don't really have a ways to damage you. Like, look at their comp. Besides Reaper, they have no damage on you whatsoever. You jump on Moira and Kiriko, they, they fade away. You don't even need to use your bubble. There's no burst damage. There's no sleep dart. There's no Hanzo shot. There's no Cassie damage, right? A lot of the squishy heroes that Winston is good at diving are also heroes that are good at killing him if he messes up. Their comp, besides Reaper, who you should be avoiding anyway, has no way of punishing you. So you, as soon as you can, as soon as this fight starts right now, find that Moira. 
Right? Get on that Kiriko. Get on that Kiriko. Get on that Kiriko. Get on that. Stop, stop, stop shooting the rain. <laughs> right? E even a tracer is probably a better use of your time, right? There you shooting that Ryan meant that you weren't paying attention to the right targets, meant that you forced your bubble, meant that you should have been able to have a bubble to pursue on the Kiriko afterwards, which you didn't. Get off the floor. Use the high ground so that you don't have to use jump, and then you can drop onto the Kiriko Moira. They fade, jump away. You can then jump afterwards to pursue. Yes. Where's that Kiriko? Oh, you lost her. Ha! <laughs> Went a bubble, though. Why bubble? You're not taking any damage. Oh, she messed up big. She messed up big, and you punished it. Don't worry about the ash, you're too low. Now worry about the ash. Where is she? Where is she? Where's the rat? Where's the rat? Get her, get her, get her, get her, get her. Get her. Yeah, nice. Good bubble. Nice punch. Got the landing damage to the tracer. Well done. Well done. All right, same thing. She goes right back to Reaper. All right. Yeah. See, I, I, here's the funny thing. You know, I know what you're doing here. You're like, I'm gonna bubble off healing support. Here's a better way to bubble off healing support. Take high ground, drop on the supports. And if they focus, you bubble them down. That's bubbling off healing support. Is it better to bubble off the one target or to actually bubble off and threaten the supports at the same time, right? Do you see what I'm saying? You should only bubble off this Reinhardt if you can't get to the supports, but you absolutely can right here. Now the supports were way over here, and you're like, I can't jump the Ana way over here. Okay, then bubble off the run, right? But you see here, it doesn't work. Would have been better for you to zap the squishies and bubble off the heal support that way. Yeah! Don't focus Reaper, though. Don't focus Reiner. Where's that Kiriko? Where's that Moira? Where's that Kiriko? Where's that... Ro where, where it is? Where, 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 where? There's, there she is. There she is. Yes. I wouldn't bubble immediately. I guess maybe the, the Reaper turns on you. So you know what? I'm dead wrong. Reaper bubbling off that immediately was perfect. Now guys know got no Wraith, so you can focus him down. Reaper in general is like actually a pretty good target if he doesn't have Wraith. But obviously you, you need to be very careful about focusing him before he uh, before he uses it. <gasps> nice! We win this, right? Right? The Padme on Madala meme. Right? Right? Wouldn't be focusing Tracer too much. That's good. And... And... Yeah, that's it. Okay. So, main takeaways. Main takeaways. Sigma. Avoid frontline on this... And avoid the... You want to put pressure on squishies. Really, let's put it, let's put it this way. Ryan Winston and Sigma. All putting priority on squishies. Winston can do it through his mobility. Sigma can do it through his range. Ryan can do it through his brain. It's harder with Reinhardt, but it's also a lot more rewarding because if you do get a Reinhardt onto a squishy, it's, they're just, they hit so much damage, right? Uh, but yeah, that's the, the goal of those. Reinhardt has a harder time getting to squishies, but that's recompensed by you also doing pretty good versus tanks. So if you can't get the squishies, not the end of the world. You're much better versus tanks, really almost all tanks. Um, as a result, to kind of compensate for that. So Sigma specifically, be very careful about just throwing your shield for no particular reason. You want to give it time to recharge. Use cover if you can, uh, if that can replace shield for you. For Winston, I think the idea was making sure that you're not only, you need to find a better balance of using your bubble on your jumps. Uh, whether you need bubble, whether you don't need bubble so that you can use your next jump and still have your bubble. And then what was our thing with Reinhardt here? I'm trying to think what would be better with Reinhardt. Hmm, we didn't have as much Reinhardt to look at, and you did take the high ground on third, it just didn't work out as well. I think focusing more on like whether you need to be taking the Reinhardt trade or not, um, but honestly, I think your Reinhardt was, was, wasn't too bad uh, besides the, the main target priorities. But yeah, let me know if you have any questions. Uh, look forward to hearing from you. Big thing, don't forget, is the mentality, just chilling. Treat competitive like a training ground that you're just enjoying and playing. Don't worry about your DPS, don't worry about your supports, don't worry about the enemy tank, don't worry about diffing the enemy tank. Play better, focus on what goals that you may have, and uh, yeah, keep up your good practice. Consistent practice is always best, and that's all I got.